Hello, James Flotten here with a model rocket. I'd just like to show you how to prep and uh, fly this rocket. First of all, the main airframe, the shock cord, the parachute. We're going to put a data logger inside of this particular flight and of course the nose cone. The first thing to prep the rocket is to put a motor in it. This rocket already has a motor in it, but I'll show you what the motor looks like. Set this down for a second. So here we have it, an A83 motor. A tells you the amount of fuel, about one quarter of the length of the tube. Eight is the thrust in Newtons, and three is how many seconds after it burns out before it explodes. This is the nozzle end, so the nozzle needs to be down when you put it in the rocket. And this is the top end, and you can see it's mostly empty for an A motor of this case. So, motor goes into the end of the rocket, and what I'd like to do is you need to take the tang, the metal tang, and pull it apart, pull it out to get the motor in. And then I like to tape the tang down so that it doesn't come open inadvertently. Now that the bottom of the rocket is stuffed, I'm gonna turn it over and put some fluff in here, okay? Rather than using the wadding that comes with the motors, I'm actually gonna use cellulose. Sometimes we call this rocket barf, just a little bit of it maybe an inch or so, that might even be more than I need. And then I'm going to poke it down. So a useful tool to have av available is some sort of a poker to get that to go all the way down to the bottom, sit on top of the motor. That will protect the parachute from the explosion. Put a little tiny bit more in. Okay. Next up, we need to load the parachute on top of that and then turn on the data logger. So for the parachute, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open it fully and then I'm going to fold it so that the lines that come out of the parachute all come out of the same spot. So let me just choose this spot. So I'm going to fold this until its line is at that spot and then fold this until its line is at that same spot and fold it so these lines are at that same spot. So now I can see the parachute, all the lines are in one location at the perimeter of the parachute because of the folding. I don't want to wrap the lines around the outside of the parachute, quite the opposite. I want to take the lines and put them on the inside of the parachute and then continue folding. So now I have a parachute that's very long and skinny with the lines on the inside. And what I'm gonna do is perhaps fan fold it into about three. So there's one, there's two, so now there's three layers and that's ready to go in the parachute. Before I stick it in the parachute, I want all of this string to go in. So shock cord in first. Basically since the sh shock cord comes out last, I want it to go in first, lest the parachute go on top of it and it get jammed. So shock cord is going in. This happens to be a non-elastic shock cord. It's made of Kevlar. It's frankly kind of too strong for this model, but it should be okay. And now there's the parachute. I want it to be able to slide in easily, and it does, that's good. And then here is the data logger. I'm gonna turn it on. So in this altimeter two data logger, I press and hold the button and uh, it'll say Jolly Logic and then it will give me the version, and then it will say menu, and I'm still holding the button until it says launch, and then I let go, and now it says launch, and then it alternates between the words launch and ready. Okay, that's good. So I'm gonna slide that in next. This particular airframe has a hole right here. This is a vent hole, so it allows the altimeter two to see the external pressure. That fits in nicely, and then the parachute goes in, the parachute's already in, and then the nose gun goes on. Let me just get all the rest of these strings in here. I've added a little bit of ribbon onto that altimeter two just for visibility. And trying to make sure that this goes on and doesn't feel too tight. That feels fine. Okay, super. So the rocket is fully prepped, except that I need an igniter. So for an igniter, <laughs> You need two things. There is the igniter right there, and then there's the plug to hold the igniter in place. So I'm gonna take the igniter and I'm gonna watch carefully. These wires here can't touch. 
So I'm even going to pull those wires apart just a little bit. And then this part at the very top of the igniter is the part that gets hot and catches the motor on fire. So I'm going to place the igniter in the end of the rocket, staying away from my launch lug. So I'm going to put it all the way down until it touches the motor and then fold it over and bend it over in a different direction than the launch lug. And then I'm going to make sure it's not, those wires are not touching, they look okay. And then I'm going to put the plug in to hold it in place. Okay, so now the igniter is in place and I'm going to go over to the launcher, which is right over here. Follow me. Here's the launch device. Put the rod through the lug. Make sure it slides nicely. It seems to be fine. And then I want to make sure that these two wires don't touch this metal plate, this blast deflector. Now I have the two uh, ends of my ignition device. I'm going to put one of them on this side. What I like to do, uh, those can't touch each other either. I like to clip it and then I like to wrap it. Notice I've left the paper in place on the igniter so that holds the two leads separate from each other. I'm going to clip the other side and wrap the other side. Try that again. Clip the other side, wrap it. Okay, I'm basically happy with that. So they're not touching each other, and they're not touching the metal plate below. I would be a little happier if the metal plate was more horizontal, but uh, there's limitations to this design. Fine, come on down here. So this is, there's batteries in here, and when I place the key into the hole, I should get a light. The light says there is a complete circuit. I just don't have enough electricity in the circuit to fire the motor. So here's what I'm going to do. This is the button. I'm going to count three, two, one, and then on zero, I will press and hold that until the motor catches fire. So if you'd step back a little bit, watch the rocket, and then as it goes up, you can watch it go up and come on back down. So here we go. Three, two, one. Now, come on over and let's just take one last look. So here is the body. The motor is still in place, that's good. Shock cord, the parachute is out, it's inflated, the nose cone is present, and here is the data. And the data is telling me things about the flight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the device, and then I'm going to turn it back on again. That just makes it start at the beginning of the data, and let's just read the data off. Okay, so here we go. Jolly Logic, battery level, data from the flight coming up, 127 feet. Top speed was 64 miles per hour. Thrust 0 0.45 seconds, that's how long the motor burned. And then this is the coasting, I'm sorry, this is the peak acceleration 17 Gs on the other hand, the average acceleration was only six Gs, six and a half. It coasted for 2.6 seconds. Remember, an A83 motor was expecting a three second coast time, and that meant that it fired 3.3 seconds after Apogee when it was already down to 122 feet, slightly below the peak. The descent, 10 miles an hour, that looks healthy under parachute, and the duration of this particular flight, 11.2 seconds. That's the total amount of data that this particular device collects.